CJ TV News. 11 o'clock report. Good evening. It's now up to the U.S. when the hostages in Iran will be released. So says Iran's new president, Tom Fenton, has more. Bani Saad said the hostages could be released within 48 hours, or it could take several months, depending on how quickly the United States agrees to a compromise plan. Answering foreign newsman's questions, Bani Saad said the plan was not his own, but had been proposed to Iran, amended by the Revolutionary Council, and approved by Ayatollah Khomeini. He confirmed that it includes a United Nations Commission to inquire into charges against the deposed Shah and American acceptance of self-criticism for what he termed its crimes during the Shah's regime, recognition that Iran has the right to seek extradition of the Shah and his money, and a promise not to intervene in Iran's internal affairs in the future. If the American answer is positive, Banisad said, we can move very quickly to take action to release the hostages. In Rome, Foreign Minister Gopzadeh expressed doubt that the release could take place within 48 hours, but said that after speaking by telephone last night with UN Secretary General Kurt Baldheim, he hoped the Commission members would be named within the next two days. Gopzadeh was asked if he was confident that the militants would obey an order to release the hostages. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is no slightest doubt in my mind. Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. Meanwhile, U.S. officials are reportedly conducting sensitive negotiations with the former Shah. What the U.S. is trying to do is get the Shah to agree to testify before the special commission without leaving his present location, Panama. U.S. intelligence sources say the Soviet Union is having such a hard time controlling rebels in Afghanistan that the number of Russian troops there may have to be doubled. Marvin Kalb has details. The major trouble is in three cities. The countryside has been under largely rebel control for some time. In Kabul, the capital, experts say there is no viable police force any longer. Soviet troops reportedly looting shops and homes, rebel troops operating freely in the suburbs. In Jalalabad, additional Soviet armored units have been deployed. Artillery fire heard night and day, rebels controlling the main road to Kabul. And in Kandahar, there are reports that the rebels are on the verge of capturing the entire city, and sizable Soviet and Afghan reinforcements would be required to hold it. U.S. officials say the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan remains wide open, with rebels in arms going back and forth, with the Pakistanis apparently unwilling to stop it, and the Russians unable to. Marvin Kalb, CBS News, the State Department. Officials at General Electric say the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan has cost the Salem GE plant 30 to 40 million dollars in business. A contract for drive systems for a Russian steel mill fell through when President Carter imposed the trade embargo on the Soviets. GE spokesman Tony Dambola says loss of the contract will not mean any layoffs. As he put it, we'll just have to work a little harder to make up for the loss. Deal. Our salesperson saved us $800. And $500 of options were thrown in. Toyota's given over $500 in options at no cost to hundreds of customers who bought 1980 Toyota Celicas, Cressidas, Supras, Coronas, or Toyota trucks. It's Fantastic a super deal. deal. You could save hundreds of dollars from your Toyota dealer. Plus, get over $500 in polyglycode options at no cost to you from Toyota. Hurry, it's a double value deal, but it ends soon. If you want a job done right, do it yourself. That's why every Pearl Vision Center has its own modern in-store laboratory. Our lab gives you one hour service in many cases. But just as important, it gives Pearl control over the critical job of finishing your lenses. The job's done right here, so the job's done right. One hour service, control over our work, plus good prices add up to Pearl value. Pearl Vision Center, the value center for eye care. Roanoke County Attorney James Buckholz tonight reaffirmed the county was on firm legal footing when it halted the distribution of Gideon Bibles to students. The practice was reportedly stopped after members of the Jewish community complained. Eugenia Halsey has more. Buckholz told the school board he wanted to make it clear the Bible has not been banned, that it continues to be taught in the county's literature and history courses. But he said there is a difference between teaching it in that manner and distributing it for religious purposes, as the Gideons were doing. The distribution of the Gideon Bibles 
uh, was clearly held by the Supreme Court, and I repeat to you on at least three occasions, and perhaps more, it's been litigated across this country for years, to be illegal and unconstitutional, and on my advice, Mr. Burton determined that we should perhaps recommend to the school board that they not be permitted in schools. Earlier in the meeting, a citizen protested the decision to halt the Bible distribution, saying it was prompted by a few vocal members of the Jewish community, and she was backed up by a school board member. The Gideons were denied access to our schools <coughs> as a result of a, of a request by representatives of a small minority group. And we were sort of had by these people. And uh, I think it's unfortunate Board members said they made the original decision to stop the distribution of Bibles in a closed session. Ribble objected to that, too, but Buckholz countered by saying there was a real threat of a lawsuit. Eugenia Halsey, Channel 7 News. Earlier, the school board decided to lift part of its so-called junk food ban. The board voted to allow schools to put back soft drink and snack vending machines, but only for after-school use. The board will also reimburse the schools for some of the money they lost when the machines were first taken out. Opponents of building a new elementary school in Clifton Forge have talked about renovating the old elementary west, the school that was shut down recently, but a consultant's report has come out against remodeling. The 200-plus students from elementary west now have to attend elementary east on a split shift. After school superintendent C.E. Darnell condemned the west school, city council commissioned a $200 study of possibly renovating the structure. That report from Samuel Lionberger Jr. of Roanoke concludes, I do not feel that the expenditure of the substantial sums necessary to renovate this particular building would be in the best interest of the city government or of the citizens. Though the report says that remodeling the West School could easily approach the cost of a new school, no cost figures are given. That led to criticism. I felt in my own opinion that it could have been more objective. Uh, for one reason, uh, there was no ballpark estimate as to the cost of renovation. Kirky said he was disappointed, adding, I'd requested Mr. Leinberger to estimate the cost of what it would take to add approximately 20 rooms to Elementary East. And was that addressed? It was not addressed in the Leinberger report. Kirky has voted against a loan for a new school. The city charter requires four of the five council votes to borrow money, and the other councilman who voted against the loan, Russell Smith, wasn't available for comment. Mark Freiberg, Channel 7 News. The president of the Virginia College in Virginia's seminary in Lynchburg has denied any misuse of federally sponsored student loans. The school's records were seized in a raid yesterday by federal officials investigating the alleged misuse. Today, as Graham Wilson reports, some specific allegations are coming to light. In an interview on the school's campus, President M.C. Sutherland had little to say about the raid, but denied charges of any wrongdoing. Allegations, go back and make allegations. But you don't think there's any anything to them? No, no, no. no just the harassment. Okay, is school is the school operating today? Is that to being held today? Look around. What do you think all of these cars and all of these people are here? I just wondered. Yes, I heard yes. Class is operating. All right, class is operating, and uh, everybody is being class according to school. Meanwhile, Channel 7 News has learned the charges possibly relate to allegations that several students were threatened with being expelled from school if they did not sign certain forms. Those forms reportedly stated the students had received grant money when in fact they did not. One former faculty member who wishes not to be identified says he was fired because he knew about this but allowed the students who had not signed the forms to take the exams and graduate anyway. Two former students who also wish to remain anonymous say they were required to sign such forms even though they had been shortchanged as much as $400. Sutherland could not be reached later to respond to those charges. A spokesman for the Department of Health, Education and Welfare, which is conducting the investigation, would not confirm those with the specific charges being investigated, nor would he say whether or not he knew of such claims. Lawyers for the Virginia Baptist State Convention, the organization claiming control of the schools, say they have heard similar charges and are investigating. Sutherland has been under pressure several times to resign his post as president of both schools. The board of managers of the Virginia Seminary recently voted to accept his resignation as that school's president, but extended the effective date to June 1st. Graham Wilson, Channel 7 News, Lynchburg. The FBI fanned out over 11 states today as agents began arresting 54 people in connection with a probe of pornography and film piracy. 
This is the FBI's third major sting operation in recent weeks. FBI agents bought the films and tapes with more than $400,000 provided by the Justice Department and the Motion Picture Association of America. The evidence fills a room at FBI headquarters in Miami, where agents operated this latest FBI sting operation for two and a half years. They set up a dummy storefront, called it Gold Coast Specialties, and wired it with tape recorders and videotape cameras. Uh, the cover story we used in the neighborhood where it was is that it was a blue jean distributorship. We're buying wholesale and we're going to sell retail. The film would come in, we never sold anything, we, we kept everything that we got in. Uh, as our people met more and more people in the pornography industry, these other people would introduce them to more and it just spread, spread around the country. During their investigation, the FBI stumbled on and bought more than 40 submachine guns. They say that Operation My Porn also led them to other cases involving murder, arson, and the traffic in stolen goods. The techniques used by the FBI in Operation My Porn were similar to those used in Abscam, but because of criticism of the way Abscam was leaked to the news media, the FBI admits being extra careful handling this case. Martha Teichner, CBS News, Miami. Agent Nettles formerly headed up the Roanoke office of the FBI. Workers at the Ingersoll Rand plant in Roanoke have voted to join the Teamsters. The union and company officials report the vote in today's election was 193 to 161 in favor of Teamster representation. See this sign? Stop! Mickermack continues to lower the price on hundreds of items with dollar stretchers. This orange and black tag means you save money, like Del Farm margarine or high top mayonnaise. With dollar stretchers, you'll see the was price and the now price. But most important, with dollar stretchers, you'll see savings. And get these other Mickermack specials. Two half gallons of high top milk, $1.69. Metal gold buttermilk, 79 cents. And Viva yogurt, 29 cents at Mickermack. We just received a special shipment of pickups from Ford Motor Company, and every truck is discounted for immediate sale, only at Magic City Ford. That sales tax credit bill killed in the House yesterday was resurrected today to what may be a very short second life. The bill would give low-income Virginians a $33 income tax credit for the sales taxes they pay. Delegates who wanted the whole food sales tax repealed resurrected that bill today with the hopes of amending it to their wishes. However, the proposal was sent back to Delegate Archie Campbell's Finance Committee, where Campbell's expected to block any chances for a total repeal of the sales tax on food. The House today did give preliminary approval to repealing the sales tax on drugs. The vote on Bath County Delegate Chad Solomon's bill was 62 to 28. In other General Assembly action today, a House committee voted to expand the State Corporation Commission from three to five members. Other committees put off action until next year on bills to raise the minimum age for drinking beer and to ban Saturday snow makeup days in the public schools. The full House gave final approval to a bill that would legalize many sex acts between consenting men and women. Under the bill, sodomy would be legal, but fornication would remain a misdemeanor. And to honor Valentine's Day, Charles Osgood takes a look at a new word and how it can be used to describe the affection couples are supposed to feel on this day. Language, like nature, abhors a vacuum. And since there's been no good word to cover the situation that used to be known as living in sin, the folks over at the Census Bureau are making what is sure to be an invaluable contribution to our vocabulary. Possil Q, person of opposite sex sharing living quarters. So simple, so non-judgmental and in its own way, sort of poetic, too. There's nothing that I wouldn't do if you would be my Apostle Q. You live with me and I with you, and you will be my Apostle Q. I'll be your friend and so much more. That's what Apostle Q is for. And everything we will confess, yes, even to the IRS. Someday, on what we both may earn, perhaps we'll file a joint return. You'll share my pad, my taxes joint. You'll share my life, up to a point. 
and that you'll be so glad to do because you'll be my Apostle Q. Charles Osgood, CBS News, New York. Hal, it was um, quite a nice day. Beautiful. We were saying possibly 50 today, almost got up to 60. We are running today? Yes. Beautiful, huh? It was a little chilly this morning. <laughs> well, you should have run in the middle.